Hey campers, George here in the man cave. It's that time. It's time to fire up the Vivo Forge. Been putting it off, just can't wait any longer. I got stuff coming in. Let's do it. Oh wait, I forgot. I filmed something about the forge. I put all that insulation in. Check it out. So following on with the last video about the Vivo Forge, like I said at the end of the video, I figured out what this refractory cement is for. And basically it's used to cover the insulation here so it doesn't burn away. It protects it while insulating. They say it's a three, about a three to one mix. I looked at uh, some stuff about it and contacted some people and they I got all different things, but typically three to one, that's what they say. A pretty thick consistency, uh, kind of like one guy said, peanut butter. Uh, so it's pretty thick. So that's what you're going to go to. I've got a little mixing bowl here. I've got the cement. I just need to take the burners off and get it all ready, mix it up, and then wait 12 hours for it to dry. One thing that they said to do was uh, tape up the edge here just along the edge here so that when you put it on, you cover all the way right onto the frame, pull the tape off while it's still drying and get a nice clean edge so it looks nice. So, hey, you want it to look nice? Let's have at it. Now I have another question. Do I concrete the bricks in or do I just leave them loose? So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the concrete in, put the bricks in, push it down so that you have, I have the pattern for the bricks and then take them out. And you know, if something happens to the bricks or they wear out, I have no idea. I just wanna be able to change them easily without destroying everything that's in there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a small mix, not a lot, and make sure I can get the right consistency. I know what I'm dealing with. So I'm going to put a bit of the concrete in there, three to one with some water, mix it up, and just start and see how it goes. All I need to do is run out of concrete and then I'm in trouble. <laughs> Okay, now I've got too much of this stuff. This is going to take a while. Okay, I think we're close enough there. Let's give it a try. Let's see how this goes on here. Yeah. Wow. I think I got it all. So now what I want to do is I'm going to let it dry a little bit, then I'm going to peel that tape off. Now I can tell you, if you want to do this, uh, don't follow me. I don't wear gloves, okay? Concrete, hmm, not good for your hands. So remember to do that. Also, you're dealing with a dust, a concrete dust. So you might want to wear a mask. I kind of took it easy. I ended up scooping with my hands so that I, when I poured, I didn't get a bunch of dust. These guys. When you're going in there like that, you're messing up your funnels again. So when you're done, you want to go back, just clean everything out there, out of the way, like they told you before, so that you don't have the concrete blocking your burner. So that looks pretty good. Now I leave it for 12 hours. I'm going to leave it for maybe about another 30 minutes, then I'll pull that tape off. Otherwise, it's just going to get too hard. And then, whoop! We can fire this sucker up. Then I want to just clean it up a little bit. I don't have to, I've got a cloth to damp it with and just wipe out uh, all the excess on the outsides. I don't like, well, yeah, you know me. Okay, so it's time to fire up the Vivo Forge. 
I know a lot of people have been waiting, wanted to get everything ready and just do one big video, firing it up, beating on some steel, maybe doing something. I'm still waiting on a lot of the stuff that I need to do that. I have the forges ready to go. I have a two pound propane tank that I can use to fire it up for the first time. This came in, which is a pair of uh, tongs that I, I bought. And apparently they give you cancer because it says here, 65 warning, California proposition. Everything, including the package, gives you cancer. What can I say? I had to get myself something to fire it up with. I don't want to put my hand in there to fire it up. I need something long enough just to quick, give it a quick flick and it'll get the propane going. The other thing I'm waiting for is I have a hammer coming. Still looking for an anvil. I've looked online. I've looked for used ones. And the prices vary from $20 to $2,000. <laughs> I know Vivo has one and I'm, it's a 22 pound one I, I think for me will be big enough and a correct anvil it has the holes required to do all that good stuff and I'm thinking I'm just gonna get that the other problem is where to do the forging I can't do it in the shed it's too small there's just no room in there I'm gonna have to do it outside so I'm thinking of making up a <laughs> bushcraft forging station but i need to work outside i don't have any way to do it it's either there by the shed or out back here on the back patio today i'm going to take the forge out put it on the back patio here and let's fire it up i've got to make sure it's working i've had it way too long i'm just going to fire it up see if it'll heat up maybe get the insulation all set a little nervous about this anyway that's where i am now so I'm going to get everything out there and let's fire it up. See if it works and how it works. Fire starter. That'll work. Okay, I got it to fire up. I adjusted uh, the, the mix up here. When I first started it, it wouldn't fire up. Then I got, once I adjusted it, it got it to fire up. But the problem is, is that the wind's blowing right through it. So it's very uneven, it's flickering and everything. I'm gonna move it down out of the wind. Whoa. I won't give it I've only got the one burner on. I had to adjust the PSI out. Now I'm gonna turn the second burner on and see if that'll come on. But I've got nasty flame.
good. <laughs> Hopefully you can see me. Let me see if I can get you a better angle here. So that... How about that? <laughs> I'll block the sun for you. As you saw, when I first lit it, it really poof, opened. I'm not sure what PSI I should be using on the gas. I set it to 15 and it seemed okay, but I barely turned the gas on and lit it and it had already built up in the forge. Just got to remember that, that you know, you're going to get that initial burst. I'll have to look into more about what the exact pressure should be, what the mix should be, what's the ideal flame. Initially, when I started it up, I had it on top there, and the wind was blowing right through the forge. So when I had the gas going, it was flickering and shooting back. So I dropped it down a little bit out of the wind, but you saw what happened. Uh, I had a gust of wind come in and it blew leaves around and that's ah, too dangerous. So I turned it off. It did run for about 15, uh, 15 minutes. I let it run. So I know I can light it reasonably safely. As you can see, my breath is fogging. That's how cold it is out here. It's at about 22 degrees right now. Not ideal. I'm outdoors. There's wind. But it worked. I got it fired up. So we're at the head of the game there. Now that I know it works, i got to fine tune it. And I think what I'm going to do is get hold of the, uh, the knife guy that I know he lives just up the road here. Find out when he's got some free time and maybe take this over there. Fire it up and have him go through it with me and talk a little bit about how to set your flame, what's ideal. These are things that I have to find out. Hey, I'm new to this. What can I say? So hopefully I can get Troy uh, to let me bring this over to his place. He has his own uh, small one like this, uh, different. He's had it for years. Maybe I can have him go through some stuff with me. Make sure I'm doing it correctly, how to set things, what the correct settings is, the flame, etc. Like, like I said, my situation is not ideal. I'm going to have to come up with some sort of work area for it. Now, I'm thinking that uh, over by the, the shed, um, I'm limited. I cannot get a bigger shed. I'm not allowed to. So I'm starting at this. I want to make sure I can do this and it's going to be useful to me. I have some ideas on what I want to do and have it by, I think I do want it by the shed. I just have to be safe about it. And that's the thing that uh, I've got to be careful of. So there you go. We fired it up. Like I said, I went through, so I had to, I, I really guessed at what I needed, the PSI and getting that adjustment. I know how to adjust the flame. I just don't know what's the best flame. Ideally, I would think you want a nice blue, clean burning flame. I only have a two pound propane tank right now, but once I get it burned up and I know what I'm doing, I'll go and get a bigger one. I'm thinking maybe five to 10. I don't know how long that would last me. It's no good starting a project, hammering away and you run out of propane. That wouldn't be good. <laughs> I did wear leather gloves. Ideally, you want some sort of protection. Uh, the, the clothes I wear is a, is a habit from work. These are all cotton. Uh, when you're dealing with fire and things like that, safety, you don't want material to be mixed with nylon or anything like that because if it burns, it melts. It's going to melt into your skin. Cotton won't do that. So... Uh, keep that in mind. I'm probably going to have to get myself a inexpensive leather apron or something to protect me when I'm hammering away on the metal. Uh, maybe some better gloves. I need tools. I need a, like I said, I need a anvil. Do need some tools. I did get some tongs uh, so that I can pull the metal out and that sort of thing. I've watched guys doing it and, and they seem not to need them that much. I suppose if it's for smaller things that you're heating up, you can turn it in the the forge but I did see a video that shows you how to make your tools which I think is the way I'm gonna start I'll start making tools that I'm gonna need before I get into anything fancy like it's gonna be simple to start and we'll go from there things are getting busy here at the cottage <laughs> and, you know before the end of the year I'm gonna do a video with an update on what's going on and what my plans are for next year this has been an awesome year because of you guys. The support I've got, unbelievable. So thank you. 
And remember, you all be safe out there, especially when you're playing with fire like this. Safety first. Burns are as bad as cuts. Don't forget, like, share, subscribe. You know the story. Pretty sure I'll be back. I'm going to fire that sucker up. Let's play a little bit with some fire. It's cold. Warm me up. Just saying. Thanks for watching. Comments below on any ideas you can think of. Need your input. See you soon.